thank you for sticking around and checking out part two of this video. Here is the foundry about five months later. As you can see, it is still in great condition. It has not been used yet, but it's been sitting outside in the elements for over five months. So let's get started making the lid. I decided to go ahead and purchase a large amount of plaster at Paris as it was cheaper than buying the little containers in order to save money on this build. We start by putting equal parts of sand, cement with the large rocks removed, preferably, plaster of Paris. Try to keep that low because the dust will go up and it'll get in your lungs. It's not good. And then a scoop of perlite, also known as volcanic rock or many other names, but usually found in garden centers. Then we go back to doing it all over again. Another scoop of sand, another scoop of cement. And you want to try to get out as many of the stones as possible because they make weak points and they do heat up and could crack and cause your foundry to to, uh, to fail. Since this is the lid, I'm being a little more lenient than it was on the actual foundry itself and I'm leaving some of them in, but you really want to take out as many as possible. As I continue to prepare this dry mix, I want to thank everyone for watching the first video and giving all the wonderful feedback. Unfortunately, I did run into several problems in between these videos, such as my camera being knocked over by my dog and having to get a shutter replaced, my Phantom 4 drone uh, lost signal and fell into the river. So I've had a lot of camera issues this past few months and have been kind of out of it. But now I'm back and hopefully getting things done. All right, now we take the dry mix and we stir it up thoroughly. And once again, keep it low, try to keep the dust down because you really don't want to be breathing this stuff in because it can get hard, it can actually get hard inside your lungs and have to be surgically removed. It could cause pneumonia and other issues, so keep it low. And once again, sift out any large rocks or any other foreign matter that you don't want in your mix. Keep mixing until all the colors are thoroughly blended and it appears to be one grayish brown mix. Make sure there's no clumps of any single ingredient. You want all the ingredients to be well blended. Then you can go ahead and prepare your lid mold. I use some basic liner of landscaping liner which is typically found around garden beds and just cut off the hose like top. And then I made a center spacer out of some aluminum sheeting and an old uh, roll from the center of the tape, the, the cardboard part, and placed it plastic on the bottom to keep it from leaking, and then just use some electrical tape to hold it all together. If you don't have these exact pieces, don't worry, you can use anything that you can make a circle out of, even cardboard and just regular tape, or even maybe even a solo cup for the center hole punch. Here you can see the progress on my mega shed, which has been taking up most of my time. If you want to see this mega shed build, click on this link here. Alright, so back to the lid. When you have everything set up and the dry mix completely blended, you can go ahead and add water to your mix. Now remember, once you add water to that plaster of Paris, it starts to set almost immediately. So you want to do as least mixing as possible, but still get the product to get mixed thoroughly. No clumps. Then go ahead and pour it in your mold quickly and press it into all the spaces. You don't want any air cavities because that will surely cause failure. It's best to have someone helping you do this so you can get it done as quickly as possible. As you can see here, it's starting to set on me quickly so I have to keep mixing constantly. Now I took some old U-clamps and then some extra pieces of scrap metal, put some nails through it and other things to add strength and rigidity to hold those handles in and to keep the lid from cracking under extensive heat. So I just use some old tie-down straps and weather, uh, weather strapping for 
you found typical construction, which are those straps with the holes in it, and place them, we weave them through the lid itself. Then continue to add more of the, the mix on top of that, pressing it down and making sure that everything was compacted in there really tight, without leaving any possible spaces for air. Now even with this, there still may be some air spots, so you want to try to either poke through with like a, a nail or screwdriver, and you can always patch up later after you pull it out of the mold. But you really want to do it ahead of time. It starts to get dry on me, so I added some more water to it, and some more loose dry mix and continue to fashion it into the mold itself. We well, want to do your best to make it level as possible. Also clean out the U-clamp holes so you can get a space to put something to pick up your lid with. Here I'm just sprinkling on some dry mix to make it a crazy cool effect on top. You can do it any way you want. You can make it smooth if you want, you can leave it rough. I thought it would look cooler rough. I thought if it looked smooth it looked a little too uh, manufactured versus right, homemade, so I decided night. to go with the rough look. And here it is as it is drying. And here it is the next day, about 24 hours later, you can see there is some air pockets, so I am doing my best to patch them up and smooth it out so there is nowhere for heat to cause weakness and failure of the lid. So use the same dry mix, you can even use more cement for this if you want, since you're really trying to just bond the holes together. That's what I'm doing here, just take my time rubbing around the whole thing and smoothing it out so that not only does it look nice, but it will function better. Once you get it to your legging, you can go ahead and dust it off and you're left with what looks like a primitive wheel. What I imagine the first wheel might have looked like before they used wood or any other material. I'm sure you also noticed by now that I made my lid very thick. It's about five and a half, almost six inches thick. Some people make their lids only two or three inches and they do crack. I thought maybe the thicker it is, the better it is. So here I am removing the center using a piece of scrap wood to break off any excess, which will allow me to remove the aluminum sheeting that I put in there for the mold itself. This was just a little bit of masking tape. It's easy just to bend it in and pull it right on out. So again, if you don't have aluminum, you can use a red solo cup or blue one or whatever color you want or any kind of material that does the same type of job for you. Once you confirm everything is smoothed out and there's no air pockets or holes, you can go ahead and sand off any kind of uh, loose pieces that might get in your way from fitting metal through the hole. I decided to make mine about a half an inch bigger than a soda can that would fit right through the lid without letting too much of the heat out. So we'll go right in my crucible to melt soda cans or any other kind of metal such as like copper, or brass. And here I am cutting up an old swing set pipe to use as the, the pipe that will go from the blower motor into the bottom elbow of the foundry itself. I decided to make it at about three feet long so that it keeps the blower at a safe distance which you can see up in the upper right hand corner of this shot to keep a safe distance from the actual foundry and the high temperature. Uh, I had to switch from the grinder over to just the saws all because it wasn't it was taking too long. Then I clean up the edges so that it has a smooth fit and less restriction on airflow. You want to make sure this pipe is metal and not PVC because it will get hot. Although the motor, the blower motor is PVC, I feel that the three feet will give it a good enough distance to keep it from melting. But we will find out in part three, so make sure you come back and check out part three to see how everything works. If you haven't done so already, check back in my other videos and check out the how to make the large $50 mini homemade metal foundry furnace, which shows you the first step in making the foundry itself. I'd like to thank everyone for subscribing to my YouTube channel and coming back frequently to check out my videos. I try to put up new ones as frequently as possible. Please continue to show the love by liking and even sharing my videos. For many other how-to videos, check out these links below to see how to make other parts of the foundry, a homemade hoop house greenhouse, your own vegetable garden, how to do automotive repair and much more. This is living the good life now.